Bungalow Bill here, and welcome to From the Depths. I spent this weekend working on my ramming breadboard. I do not have the updated version on the Steam Workshop yet, or on the breadboard repository. When I'm confident that it's finalized, I will put it up there. It's a significant improvement over the previous edition, removes a lot of the hacks and the jank from it, and makes it work with substantially less stable craft. However, it means that I didn't spend the weekend working on the Adventure Mode series at all, so it'll probably be quite a while before I have another episode of that ready. However, since I was looking at APN Guidance, I have an APN Guidance tutorial ready, or at least it was something that's on my mind. So these missiles are basically free, free real estate, they have no damage, they have one fin module, they have one module of APN Guidance. I'm going to turn the gain down to something pretty low, like one. And we'll see that first. So APN Guidance is Augmented Proportional Navigation. And Proportional Navigation is built on the principle that if an enemy is not moving relative to your field of view, so, you know, if they're always 15 degrees to starboard or so, and you are closing, you will hit them. So, what proportional navigation systems attempt to do is to maintain a constant bearing between yourself and the enemy. They do this by, if the enemy appears to move to the left in your field of vision, you turn to the left. If they appear to turn to the right, you turn to the right. And you can see these missiles attempting to do that. How much they do that is the gain. The gain is low on these missiles, so they don't turn that fast in response, which is why well, the target is always sliding a bit to the front of the field of vision, and they wind up dropping behind it. To some extent, that's a little bit inevitable with APN guidance, depending on the missile speed compared to the enemy speed, but they can certainly do better than this. So let's turn the gain to the defaults, which is a setting of two. And okay, this is almost immediately apparently better. They're reacting a little bit faster, they're coming in at a sharper angle. Depending on the block that we're targeting on the enemy and the error of three meters, how that bounces around on the remote guidance, well, we're not always going to hit them. But they're definitely doing a little bit better than they were before. However, the response, well, it still seems a little slow. So maximum sliders here. I didn't get that missile, I think. So we'll wait for the next one. And now we're going to be reacting significantly faster. And we're coming in now at a sharp angle instead of falling off to the tail, which is excellent. So what else can we do? Well, the number of fins does not matter if the APN guidance is programmed properly, and it does seem to be programmed properly. I shouldn't say it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter... So it doesn't matter if the turn rate on the fins is not maxed, if it's not using all of its maneuverability. Basically, the APN guidance gain, the amount that it turns the missile, or the amount that it tells the control surfaces to turn, is also, also correlates to how strong the control surfaces are. So unless it's maxing them out, it will not change its turn rate based on the availab availability of control surfaces, and indeed, this trajectory looks pretty similar, with the exception of the fact that when it does try to turn fast, or when it's trying to turn fast before, it can turn a little bit faster now. But it wasn't doing that that often. We're still seeing a few blips, that's probably from the remote guidance inaccuracy, making it look like the enemy is moving really fast. And due to the high gain in the four fins, when it sees something like that, it will be able to twitch in a way that it couldn't before. But that's the main difference between adding with adding fins. It'll make a big difference when trying to close on more squirrely targets, which we will look at pretty soon. One other thing that happens as you turn the gain up for proportional guidance is, well, if we turn left in response to the enemy moving to the left, but we turn too far, it'll look like the enemy moves to the right, so we'll turn to the right. But if we do that too much, it'll look like the enemy moved back to the left, and it'll lead to us coming in like this. If you turn your gain up way too high, that's the result. I have not really managed to get that to happen. As you've seen, even with these missiles at 5, it doesn't really happen. The missiles will be a little bit more responsive if the enemy is closing on us instead of just circling. And you might be able to get them to fishtail a little bit. But in my experience so far, you can basically just... 
set the gain all the way up, and it's fine. Uh, on my breadboard, that won't be the case. The gain really isn't bounded on it. Um, you can set the gain way too high, and it will do that snaking trajectory that I've described. So, okay, this is a this is at least a decent target to look at because we can kind of prepare it, compare it to what we'd expect from prediction guidance and see see that well, this actually isn't that different. We'll fall a little bit more to the rear than with prediction guidance because we're not actually calculating an intercept point. Although what we're doing is not too dissimilar. Although, and we can also talk a little bit about the A. And so, to me, what the A can stand for, because, you know, it's just augmented well, is one way to augment it is that you can also adjust the thrust on the missile. As far as I can tell, um, they don't do this. I don't really know what the augmented for, what the, how would these are augmented? Because they don't, they don't do that. So one thing, one thing that you, that you can say about in guidance is that if you're heading away from an enemy, you'll actually, um, it'll line up the butt of your rocket with a past intercept point. These missiles don't suffer from that. If they're not closing, they don't use proportional navigation. And we'll still manage to get an intercept. So I suppose that's one way that they're augmented. Uh, another thing that we can do is turn, turn the gain down to 0.1. And if this was actually proportional navigation and only proportional navigation, with a gain of 0.1, I don't think we'd even be seeing this. Maybe we would, but this is look, starting to look more like direct guidance. I think that these missiles have some amount of direct guidance that's mixed in, rather than just... and direct guidance being just turned straight at the enemy. So this mixed in, rather than just relying purely on proportional navigation. And I think it leads to some... To them not behaving exactly as you would you would always expect. They behave a little bit less like PN guidance than you might expect sometimes. But also gives you behaviors like this, where they're not completely useless. Where you turn APN gain down to 0.1, and they still do something. Whereas what you'd expect, if the gain is really low, is that these missiles would just, would just fly in a straight line and wouldn't do anything. And similarly, as mentioned before, if they're pointed away from the enemy, even with a very high gain... Um, well, they wouldn't get a valid intercept. So those are definitely ways that they're augmented. I'm not sure I'd really call that APN because of those augmentations. Uh, maybe Drava has done something else and someone will educate me. So the next thing to look at is, well, how do these deal with evasive t enemies? Because that's really the gain over target prediction might be how this respond to more squirrely threats. Or, you know, maybe it's not. Maybe they're just an alternative. So, we're going to spawn in a Hake Squadron. And the reason I Hake Squadron instead of just Hakes is because I believe they spawn in close enough to each other to get their um, ally collision avoidance thing to turn on. And some of them will climb and some of them won't. Either that or they have different AIs that make some of them climb. Um, anyway, if we're lucky, we'll start homing in on one that actually dodges us up or down. So you'll be able to see how we lead the target a little bit. If they fly straight in, well, we will hit them. And in particular, I'm going to retarget to one that's not injured. This isn't necessary because, especially with a gain of two, but even in general with these missiles, we'll never hit one that's injured. These are pretty um, agile. But, well, they're not fast. I'm going to wait for one that we fire after the enemy banks. If we hit them, it's going to be a little unfortunate if we hit them before then, which I think we did. So this is Now you can really see the proportional navigation guidance, and it's working okay. But as we saw before, With my own vehicle, well, it reacts a little slower, so it doesn't cut the corner as tight as it could. This has pros and cons. 
Sometimes if the APN guidance coefficient is too high and you really lead the enemy by a lot, you'll just put the missile into the water or put the missile in space if the enemy's climbing or descending quickly. But I've generally found just no middle sliders to be the correct solution. Uh, speak of the devil, though. Happened immediately after I said that that could happen. This one's going to be... You know... Hakes are unruly. So... Anyway. In general, I find slightly better luck with a higher gain. I think a gain of 4 might be pretty good. That was... Maybe not overcompensating. If it wasn't for the 3 meter error, I think that would have hit. But my experience anywhere between a gain of 4 and a gain of 5 isn't bad. In particular, as long as you don't see the missile really fishtailing, you're probably in a good place. The other thing is, well, these missiles all have issues when they're climbing or descending rapidly if they're pointing nearly up or nearly down. So if, if a missile doesn't do so well in those positions, um, you just kind of have to ignore it. They don't do terribly unless they really start to roll around the axis, but just kind of ignore any issues that come up in those cases. But anyway, my my advice for them is definitely going to be just, just set the APN guidance coefficient to 4 or 5. And don't worry too much about tuning it, unless you really run into issues. Well, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed watching, and I hope to see you in the future.